<laughs> Look at this. Well, I'm <laughs> Yes, down the bay, and we've got classic split swing vault again. I mean, what more can we have for? And it did make it in. We were a little bit nervous that it might not. It's um, close, but, it's, but it was close. It's in. Uh, we've had one in before, and that was Polly's Parlor's ice cream truck. So cool. Really cool. I mean, I'm excited about all the days in the bay. Look, it's a split screen. When do you get to detail a split screen van? I don't. I've not split. Not since the last Polly's Parlor one. That was with an ice cream. <laughs> no ice cream today, but it doesn't matter. I'm rambling. So today, I mean, we're going to get it washed and dried. Um, Terry, the owner, is really into his car care and detailing. Like I said, there's no swells on it. He, he details it regularly, takes to a lot of shows and events. It's going to be joining us for early edition at Cywell this weekend. Uh, it's going to be on the stand. And um, yeah, so just kind of find out from him what he wants to get out of it and why he's come and you know what products he wants to play with. So if people don't know how to get in the bay, contact us directly. So it's dmasterman at maguires.com. Um, contact us with images of your show car or project build and a list of shows and events that you go to. And then if we can get it in, we will. Good job, let's crack on. So there's a lot of negativity when it comes to using a waterless product on your vehicle or the paintwork. But what we'd always say is, it's, it's perfect for a dirty, clean vehicle. So something that's been cleaned, driven to somewhere, and just needs to spruce up, it's got light road grime and dirt on there. The reason it works so well is because it encapsulates and lubricates the, the road grime and dust away from the surface rather than just saturate it and push it around. So that's why we'd always have by using it. Cool, and then we've got two towels, one for taking dirt off and one for Exactly that, we've got clean. two towels. Um, when folded, make a hundred towels. Yep. Um, so we're using a nice pile on our towel, which is gonna, like I say, grab hold of the dirt, embed it into the pile, and remove it away. Um, like I said, I do fold them, which means that every time I go into a new panel, I unfold it, it's a fresh new microfiber towel. And then your second towel is gonna buff the surface and kind of bring that wax to a shine. So it will protect it once used as well. So, big tip. Get it nice and wet. Wipe one way with your cleaner towel. And then if you don't want any kind of white marks and streaks on the car, get your buffing towel and go in the opposite direction. This way you're not constantly using the same movement on the paint and you won't get any white marks. Just to give everyone a delve into the world of content creation for Maguire's, our content creator is borrowing my phone to take a picture. Your foot's in the shot, can you believe it? I'm stood here and your foot is sorry, in the shot. Sorry, sorry. Well, for some reason... Is it superior? No, it's not superior than our iPhone, and I will never conceive to that. I'm maybe two feet away from the bus, and I've got the whole of it in. Can they see that? Yeah. Science. You mentioned that you use the ultimate pace wax yeah. um, a lot yeah, on the on the van. So we're going to be using, we're going to switch it up because we know I always go to a pace wax. Um, but yeah. if you had Tom in here, he would favour towards the, the liquid right. side. So what we're going to do is show you yeah. how to use the liquid and how it's different from the paste. Yeah. Performance wise, you're going to see the same, but you can use these slightly different. So with yeah. this, you can actually use it with a machine. So on a vehicle like this, it's so big and vast, and especially yeah. for like the big long pan side panels, yeah. it's just going to make your life a lot easier. But you can still use it by hand around the intricate parts. Yeah. So I'll show you how to use it with our DA machine and also the black finishing pad. So this is right. ultra soft. So you mentioned earlier about all different types of pads and, yeah. and products. So we have a burgundy cutting pad, which is a firm pad for swell removal and defect yeah. removal. The yellow polishing pad for refining, and then this really soft finishing pad for right. waxing. Cool. So on the, on the going, sorry, going back to the burgundy pad, mm -hmm. what, okay. what product would you use to that, go with that yeah. to take out as well? So it'd be a, like an ultimate compound. Right. 
something like our ultimate compound. So if you feel that, yeah, I mean, you can. Yeah, that's so much. it's a lot firmer. It needs that yeah. back foam behind it. When it's got product in it and it's going at a heat, it will get softer. Yeah. But the reason it's so rigid is so you can cut through those soils and scratches. Right. A good middle ground is the yellow pad. Right. So you can see it's softer. It's still got a bit of back foam yeah. to it. It's still quite firm, so yeah, it will so refine the yeah, paint. A bit more than then ultra soft black pad. Yeah. So kind of revival, refining, protection. Cool. And sorry, products to use with that. With ultimate compound, ultimate polish, ultimate wax. Right. Okay. Yeah. So. Any kind of mid-range refining tool, whether it's uh, like 205 or 210 or Ultimate Polish, would be great with that. Yeah. Or if you've already taken the hard swirls and scratches out and you want to maintain it, yeah. you can get rid of that and maybe use Ultimate Compound with that if it's right. swirled but not heavily swirled. Yeah. So it's just adapting it to the paint. Right, okay. So normally if we're working a, a product like a compound or a polish, we would prime the pad. Yeah. But because we're only applying a wax, we're not working a wax, all we need to do is put a small amount of product on it. Let's get the wax nice and shook up. I use the back kind of lip of the lid there to kind of get a nice clean line. Like that. So that's all you need, and you only ever top this up when you start seeing gaps in it. Right. So this okay. should theoretically be pretty much most outside. Really? Yeah, you should barely see it. It should be a fine, right. finer film technology, it's called okay. wax. I've probably used half a bottle. <laughs> <laughs> it has to go to one side. So the, it's like, um, you know if you put way too much lacquer on a car, yeah. it's never going to cure, it's never going to harden up. No. If you put too much wax on a car, it's never going to cure. Right. It's going to get quite muddy, and when you're wiping it down, it will yeah. kind of look cloudy and stuff like that. So if okay. you've got a fine film of wax, it's going to firm, firm up nice and yeah. hard, you'll take it off and you've got a good layer of wax protection without right. doing too much work. Yeah. Stamp out the area you want to work, like this. Set the speed to the slowest on the machine, which is yeah. three. Okay. And then the golden rule is, the, the slower the machine's moving, the quicker you can go. Because we're not correcting, we're just applying. Yeah. Whereas if we were correcting, we'd be going much faster on the machine, but slower on the arm movements. Right. That makes sense, because we need yeah. to give it time to work it. But because we're just applying a product, it doesn't matter. Okay. So, turn it on, nice and quick. Always start and stop on the panel, that's done. Okay. That's as much wax as you need on the surface. Right. Okay. Is that a lot less than you maybe used to see? You just get your hand in there and you just go, uh, <laughs> yeah. just, just throw, yeah. throw it on I, and rub I, it around. I would have probably gone over that three or four times. No, I, just, I, I go sideways, up and down, yeah. sideways, and then up and down. Which is cool if you're working the product. Right. It's good um, practice to have. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So if you were compounding or polishing, Exactly that. Yeah. But because we're just applying the wax, we're just applying it to the surface, we're backing off from the paint. Yeah. That's it, that's all you need to do. So it makes your life 10 times easier. Yeah. That's it, done. Right. Because it's synthetic, it's going to stay nice and cool, which yeah. means it won't harden like a canuba wax. Canuba wax is because they're a natural material, can get quite firm, yeah. whereas this will stay nice and soft, so you can confidently cover the whole van knowing that you're going to be able to take it off. No problem. While he's machining, obviously there's quite some intricate areas on here, but we yeah. probably wouldn't want to get in with a machine polish, we don't want to rattle these or shake any of that. So we're just going to use it by hand. Uh -huh. Per section, talking about that, that's it. So before you do it, put some lines across it like that. Yeah. This means when you go over it, it's going to top up the pad and uh -huh. you need to get a nice equal, even spread. And that would be the whole of the project. Oh yeah, completely. So just to recap on what we're doing and why we're doing it. So we've got Terry using the machine polisher and with the black finishing disc and our ultimate liquid wax. It's all because it's such big panels, 
he says he likes to use a DA, um, but he just wanted to know how he could use on using a wax. So we're using the liquid wax with that to make his life easier. This goes to a lot of shows, and he likes to look it best. I mean, you can see how good the paint is. Um, so we don't need to do any correctional work, just a bit of um, enhancement of the gloss, really. Then we've got Lauren over here using the same wax, but by hand. So for the smaller intricate areas, same wax, same liquid wax on a black um, soft foam applicator pad, which is exactly the same as our yellow soft foam applicator pad, just black because it comes with wax. And then we're just going to get the whole car covered, let it cure, then take it off with a finishing towel. This is the area we did first. You can see that it's nice and cured there. So we're going to use our finishing towel. So these are, you know, we've been using the regular microfiber towel. Yeah. So with detailing and, and removing wax, you want to go for the ultra nice soft, soft plush yeah. ones. Yeah. Just started onto that. Oh, sweet. Yeah. So, you know, we've been doing our up and down, left and right. Yeah. Exactly the same. So take the, the kind of wax off there. Flip the towel. Flip it that way. That's it. Okay. That's as easy as the wax should be to take off. Okay. It's been nice and clean. See, that probably takes us about another 10 minutes to get the wax on. Oh, does it feel like it drags and stuff? Yeah, like you'll yeah. wipe it and then you'll see another bit. Streaks and yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah. because a lot of people kind of like go crazy like that and sometimes you put too much heat through it and it kind of hardens up. Okay. But if you're just okay. nice and chilled out, just nice clean white lines like that. Looks good. So we use the waterless uh, wash wax anywhere on the body. So this is the waterless wheel and tire. So it's cool. a heavy duty detailer and tire dressing. So we'll just get it on there. Make sure you get it on the tires as well. Okay, on the wheel. <clears throat> then with the microfiber towel, wipe it down. What phone have you got? What phone have you got? Oh, so with a separate towel. Okay. Sorry, Petra. Right. With a separate towel. If you like them looking glossy, leave it. But if you like a satin sheen like me, just run the towel over it like that. Hi Barbara. How are you? Good. Job's good. So if you wanted it shiny, you wouldn't have to do the tire shine afterwards. Exactly that. Yes, yeah, so it's going to dress the tires for you, as well as clean the wheels. Okay. Cool. Nice and easy. It smells amazing too. So another day in the bay done and um, what we've done today is kind of come away from our usual processes of you know compounding it down, reviving it, uh, refining it, protecting it. Um, we've come away from that and we've kind of stripped it down to a nice gloss enhancement detail. So we cleaned it down using the waterless wash and wax anywhere. Um, it didn't need clean, it was perfectly smooth. And then we showed Terry how to use our ultimate liquid wax with a machine polisher to really enhance the gloss, but also use it by hand as well in some of the intricate areas. Uh, we finished off the glass. Uh, we used the waterless wheel and tire. Um, it really didn't need much doing to it. It just needed a nice gloss enhancement. People always ask, what's the difference between the paste and the liquid? Um, as long as they are the same wax, um, performance wise, you're gonna get the same amount of gloss and performance uh, protection. Uh, it's just you can use them differently. I like a paste wax, I like that kind of hand kind of finish. Um, you can still use a liquid by hand, but you can really get the benefit from it by using it with a machine, and especially if you've got a bigger vehicle um, or if time's at the essence, you just get a nice uniform layer of wax. And um, yeah, good job. Good job. Thanks. Take a step. Away. See ya.